I'm going to talk about uh, transitions generally, and then specifically a little bit about the transition to uh, the merger. And this is not a, a sales pitch. Uh, I'm no good at that at all to begin with, and I'm not sure that'd be fully appropriate anyway, but I will talk about my own feelings about the merger and, and, and offer some encouragement, but um, maybe we should. So I, I have seven messages. The first one is, you know, I, I, there's, there's some disappointment, I think with me for sure. And maybe with, with, for some of you, a uh, disappointment, we wonder why Wonder Church didn't grow on its own. Um, God has plans and we don't fully understand them. Um, and so there may be some level of disappointment. I, I had hoped that it would grow. I had envisioned and hoped that maybe at this time we'd be part of a, a thriving Jesus community with, say, 100, 100 people. Uh, but that didn't happen. Um, I don't know all the answers as to why it didn't. Uh, we certainly prayed for it. We prayed for it to happen. And, uh, and it didn't. Um, but I do know that God uses everything we give him and he uses all our prayers, even in ways that we don't understand and we will not, will not see. And I, there's a good story. I, I heard a, a good sermon on this topic from a pastor several years ago, and it has to do with, with Paul and how he became a Roman citizen, and it's relevant, and it's interesting. So we don't know for So Paul was born a Roman citizen, and which means his father was a Roman citizen. And we, we don't know, we know for sure exactly how that happened. Uh, he was born in Tarsus in Turkey. Uh, but there are a number of, of plausible theories and my pastor from several years ago had a theory that he explained and it was quite compelling and gave a good lesson. So one possibility is that, you know, we know there was in BC, I don't know, 70 or 90 or 100, a conflict, a war, a battle. And I, I think it was between two rival Roman politicians and their private armies or something. Uh, but the important thing is, and it was in Turkey, uh, around the, the area of Tarsus in southern central Turkey, I believe. And, and the important thing to, to know is that because of the war, uh, Tarsus, which, which had supported the winning side, was given a gift, and they were given a, a bonus. They were, uh, the city was allowed to have an elevated status in the empire, uh, which meant that all of its uh, citizens would be would be Roman citizens, um, and but they need, they wanted to rebuild the city and they wanted to populate it, um, and so what the Roman Empire did is they went and they took some people from other places in the empire and tra transplanted them into Tarsus, and they went and did that with uh, with it, with people in Israel, and so uh, the, the the possibility is that. Paul's, or this time say Saul's, great-great-grandparents were uprooted from their lives in Israel and forced to move to Tarsus. And as an inducement to do so, or a, a reward for doing so, or as compensation for doing so, they were given Roman citizenship. Now, this was probably a really bad event for these people, for Paul's great 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 grandparents. Uh, they probably had a stable life in Israel around friends and family and worship and the ability to go and worship at the temple um, frequently. Um, and they were uprooted and their lives were turned upside down. They were forced to live in Tarsus. This is not what they wanted. And they probably prayed about it and prayed that it didn't happen, but it happened. And they lived their lives never knowing why God let that happen. Um, but um, it, it did have a reason, even though they would never find out in their, in, in, their, in their earthly lifetime, it did have a reason because it continued, it continued on where Paul 
was born, or Saul at this point, was born in Tarsus, which means he was born a Roman citizen. Um, now, he was then raised in Jerusalem, uh, but he was born in Tarsus. And why is this important? Well, it turned out that the fact that Paul was born in Tarsus played a huge role in the growth of the kingdom of God. Um, it, it turned out that uh, it allowed him to, first of all, avoid getting stoned to death a couple of times because he, he, he's like, hey, you can't do this to me, Jews. I'm, I'm a Roman citizen. You, you better watch out. And it also meant that when he was arrested in Jerusalem, after he took the gift to the brethren there, he was able to appeal to Caesar as a Roman citizen, which meant he was taken as a prisoner to Rome. And from Rome, from that prison, he wrote uh, multiple of his letters um, that we read today. So the uprooting of Saul's great-grandparents, and they never saw the plan and, and why God did it, but it turned out to be crucial to the spread of the gospel around the world. Um, and so I just wanted to, to share that story to say that, hey, we don't, we may not know uh, the seeds that have been planted the past three, four years here at Wonder Church, and we don't, we, we can't see from our earthly perspective uh, what God has done and is doing, uh, but he is using everything we, we give him and he has a plan. Uh, so that's the first message. The second one is that transitions are a part of life, uh, a natural part of life. Uh, nature has its seasons, and that's for a reason. And God gives us seasons in our lives uh, for reason too. Uh, seasons can lead to growth. Um, and so they're part of life, a natural part of life. And part of living a productive life is embracing transitions and using them as a springboard to grow uh, to new heights. Uh, I've had transitions in my life. I'm thinking at the moment of career transitions uh, that were not welcome at the time. And I didn't see at the time uh, what God was doing or how or why it was good. Uh, but later, with the benefit of hindsight um, and maturity, I came to recognize what, at least part of what God was, was doing. And so maybe it can be the same way with us. Now, to transition to some more uh, messages that are focused on our particular situation. Um, in message, message three, we got uh, really, really small as a community. You can see who's, who's on, this, um, on this call. Um, you know, Jesus' own community shrunk after his death and arguably after his death, it was down to 11 men and an unspecified number of women, but it grew again, uh, but it had to undergo changes uh, to grow. And joining Foundation Church uh, can be a way to transform and to grow. Uh, and it's also, it's also a way for Richard and Darlene to continue to be fruitfully employed and so that the world will continue to um, benefit from their gifts and their blessing. Um, now, Message four, when you find like-minded travelers, it's good to team up. You know, there's strength in numbers. And Foundation Church, they are like-minded travelers. Uh, I'm really encouraged uh, that we were able to find such a beneficial match um, for this merger. Foundation Church is a vineyard church. There aren't a ton of those around. There aren't, uh, you know, they're not all over the place, like Methodist churches or whatever. Um, it's a vineyard church. Foundation Church believes in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Foundation Church practices prophecy. They practice real intensive prayer. Um, they, I think they practice healing. I'm not fully aware of all their healing practices. Uh, Richard and Darlene have been mentors of sorts to Chris and Darcy. Uh, and so it's a natural fit. And, you know, it's hard to find like-minded people. I know as I get older, it's tougher to, to meet and make friends. And when you find like-minded people, uh, you work together. You work together. You, you combine your resources, you combine your efforts and your gifts, and you, you, you multiply them. You know, situation where two plus two can equal six or seven. 
Um, and, you know, with the two churches, maybe alone, maybe neither one ultimately succeeds or survives, but maybe together, uh, together there's more of an opportunity for the combined church to become a thriving, a thriving enterprise, a thriving entity. Uh, and so that's message number four. When you, when you find like-minded travelers, it's good to team up. Um, now, number five, I'm excited about the future of Foundation Church and Wonder Church and the combination. The future is wide open, and I'm excited to see where it goes and what God does with it. Uh, Foundation Church has a lot of youth, and that's really, really hard to find nowadays. I don't know how many of you are following what's been going on in the church the past uh, decades, but even the past few years. Uh, participation in Christian life by people in their 20s is plummeting. Um, and so it's, it's really, this is a really, it's a rare gem of a, of a place. And, and the church, Foundation Church has energy, uh, but they need more direction and mentoring. And Richard and Arlene can provide that. And maybe we can too. Uh, Foundation Church may or may not need resources. I don't know, but we can, we can provide that. Um, also, Chris and, and, and Darcy need a break. <laughs> uh, you know, they, they have jobs too. Uh, they have jobs and they're also running the church and we all know how difficult that is. And, and Richard and Darlene need a break too. Uh, they've been running this church flat out for a long time and they're, they're not getting any younger and, and they need a break. And by combining, the four of them can, can accomplish more together than they could on their own and do it in, in working, working fewer hours. Um, they can accomplish more and work, work less. Now, also Chris needs to eventually go full time at the church somehow. Um, and I mean, how much more could he do if he was working full time at the church? I don't know how much a merger will help in that regard, but it may. And I'm also encouraged about the house of prayer that's envisioned for uh, for the new entity um, on the own, on its own. I just want to see where it where it goes and where Richard and Darlene can can take it. Uh, that's their passion. We we all know them, and we know that their passion is prayer and healing. And I think they're specifically gifted to run a, a prayer and healing ministry. And I've, as I've discussed in the past, and so this is wonderful for them. And and I also wonder if if uh, it can the, the house of prayer may grow, lead to growth for Foundation Church. And so I'm excited for that. Now, Foundation Church is also, they, they sent out a missionary. Uh, they sent out a missionary this year. Uh, maybe with our involvement, they can send out more. <clears throat> they also have small groups. They have three or four small groups. And maybe with, the, with us joined, they could have more. Um, I also know that Chris is a disciple maker. That's his gift. He makes disciples. He's gifted to do it. Um, and his church is founded on discipleship, and I think this is an excellent model. It's what we're called to do as Christians, to make disciples. And this is the Great Commission, you know, from Matthew 28. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. This is the Christian calling. So I'm really excited to see where Foundation Church goes. Now, Message number six, nevertheless, Foundation Church may not be for everyone. Uh, at the end of the day, we all have to be where the Lord wants us to be. Uh, Faith and I are not uh, committing or guaranteeing to remain with the merged church long term. We have our kids to think about, and Foundation Church will not have a large middle school or in high school programs, And uh, but we are going to try it out. We're going to give it a good faith effort. We're going to um, we're going to attend Foundation Church and we're, for a period of time and see where, where the Spirit leads us. Uh, maybe we can, maybe we can uh, have a situation where we can, our kids can go to a larger mega church and Faith and I can worship uh, at Foundation Church and serve there. And maybe even the, the kids would join us at Foundation Church some Sundays. They, they really liked it last week, and they even asked if we could go again this week. Uh, and they, they, did, they prompted us on that. Uh, so that's encouraging. But 
Um, you know, we're just going to have to see. Um, but we're going to give it a good faith chance and see what the Lord is saying to us. And I encourage everyone to do the same. Just give it a chance and see what the Lord speaks to you about it. Um, just be open to, to, to what the Holy Spirit's going to tell you to do. Um, and I, I, think, uh, I think that's the appropriate thing to do. So that's my, I mean, you can tell that's the best I can do as a sales pitch. You know, I, I'm not a salesman, but I, I, I do truly believe, I feel that very strongly. And the last message is, well, what, what do we do? But what, what about this age difference? Uh, what do we think about that? Well, I think that ideally a church should be like a, a community. Uh, you know, Paul talked about the body having different parts and everyone having different gifts that they contribute to the body. Well, in a similar way, everyone has different levels of faith and life experience. And having different ages in a church, which contributes to people being able to, um, to add to the, the church in different ways, I think is healthy. And so I don't think, and this is my opinion, I don't think in general we should try and put ourselves in churches only with people of our own age group. Uh, I think it's healthier we can contribute to a diversity of, of ages in a church. Now, that's not the case at all times for all people. Everyone's situation will be different, but I'm just making a generalization. Um, now, you can say, well, at Foundation Church, we don't have a diversity of age. We just have very young, and that's about it. And I see that point. Uh, but potentially, if everything works out well, uh, this gives us opportunities to mentor and serve the younger generation above and beyond what we would normally get at a church. Uh, Foundation Church needs some older folks to balance things out and to serve as mentors and to, uh, to do a whole, whole host of things. And so if I had to join a church with an unbalanced age profile, I would join one that's skewed younger. Uh, these kids are the future of, of the church, and we want to pour into them. And there's not a lot of them out there, so these are precious assets, and we really need to, to invest in them. So, um, you know, those are my thoughts on the age difference. Uh, those are the messages that I wanted to bring uh, as a, a lead-in to our guided discussion. Um, and that's, uh, that's, all, that's all for the message.